international TD25E crawler tractor steering system and final drive orientation and problem diagnosis. This program has been developed to give service personnel a thorough understanding of the construction and operation of the steering system and final drive used in the TD-25E crawler tractor. The program also includes a series of checks and tests to be performed when diagnosing a problem in the steering system. The steering unit is of the modular design, meaning it is contained within a single housing and can be removed as an assembly. The steering unit is located in the rear frame of the tractor where it is submerged in hydraulic oil. The TD-25E steering system is very similar to the system used in the TD-20E crawler tractor. The major difference is an additional planetary assembly on both sides of the unit for torque multiplication. Shown in the illustration is a cross-section of the right side of the steering unit as it is positioned in the machine. We'll simplify the description of the unit by dividing it into three major sections. The pinion and bevel gear, the planetary steering and brake assembly, and the intermediate drive planetary. The program will be further simplified by discussing only one side of the steering unit since the operation of the other side is identical. The pinion gear is driven by the transmission through a splined drive sleeve. Two tapered roller bearings support the pinion gear in its housing. As the pinion gear rotates, it drives the bevel gear which is bolted to the gear hub. The hub is the largest component in the steering unit and has numerous functions. In the next frame, we'll take a look at the hub and what it does. The gear hub essentially serves as a support member for other components and as an oil manifold. Oil pressure, necessary for the high range clutch engagement and lubrication for the planetary bearings, is delivered through drill passages in the hub. The hub receives the oil through ports in the carrier by means of the oil grooves cut into the shaft of the hub. We'll see the path of the oil a little later in the program. The planetary steering and brake assembly consists of four major components. The brake, the high range clutch, the planetary, and the low range clutch. In the next five frames, we'll discuss each of these components individually. The planetary consists basically of a carrier, three planet gears, and a sun gear. The carrier rotates freely on the gear hub by means of two tapered roller bearings. The planet gears rotate independently within the carrier on their own shaft and bearings, and the sun gear rotates on the hub of the carrier. We'll see the different functions this planetary has when we discuss the operation of the clutches and brake in the program. Pointed out in this illustration are the high range clutch and the related components. From left to right, they are the ring gear, the clutch pack, the return springs, followed by the piston, and finally, the clutch retainer. The high range clutch pack consists of four clutch plates and five friction plates. The plates are stacked alternately within the clutch retainer. As seen in the photo on the right, the clutch plates have external tangs which fit into slots in the clutch retainer, making the retainer and the clutch plates an integral unit. The friction plates have internal splines to mesh with the planetary carrier. 
When the steering control lever is in the high range position, high pressure oil delivered through the gear hub moves the piston against the clutch pack, compressing the plates. We now have the clutch retainer, the piston, the clutch plates, and the planetary rotating together as a unit. The three planet gears, one of which can be seen in the illustration, are in mesh with both the ring gear and the sun gear. Because the sun gear is free to rotate in the high range condition, the planet gears do not rotate on their shafts. When the steering control lever is moved to the brake position, the hydraulic pressure is cut off and the return springs move the piston back, disengaging the clutch. The brake used in this steering unit is a clutch pack type, very similar to the high range drive clutch previously discussed. The major difference is that the brake is spring applied and hydraulically released, where the high range clutch is just the opposite in operation. The major components of the brake are the clutch retainer, the brake clutch pack, the piston, and the brake apply springs. The brake clutch is made up of five clutch plates and six friction plates stacked alternately in the clutch retainer. Like the high range clutch pack, the clutch plates are secured to the retainer by tangs on the outer diameter of the plate and the friction plates are internally splined to the planetary carrier. When the steering control lever is in one of its two drive positions, high pressure oil is delivered through the pressure port in the clutch retainer. This oil pressure holds the piston against a series of brake apply springs, thus keeping the brake released. When the control lever is placed in the brake position, this oil pressure is cut off and the springs force the piston against the clutch pack plates. Since one set of plates is splined to the planetary carrier and the other to the stationary clutch retainer, the rotating motion of the planetary is halted. As mentioned in the previous frame, hydraulic oil pressure is cut off to the driving clutch pack when the brake is applied. The major components of the low range clutch are the cover, the piston, the return springs, the clutch pack, followed by the clutch retainer and the sun gear. This clutch pack contains six clutch plates and seven friction plates, alternately stacked, having the same design as the high range clutch and brake. As can be seen in the right side of the frame, the clutch plates are secured in the retainer by external tangs, and the friction plates have internal splines to mesh with the sun gear hub. In the next frame, we'll see how the low range clutch operates. As previously described, when the steering control lever is in high range, the complete planetary and high range clutch rotate together as a single unit. Now let's see what happens when the operator selects low range steering. High pressure oil is delivered through a port in the cover shown on the left. The oil pressure moves the piston against the clutch pack, locking the sun gear hub to the stationary clutch retainer. Since the sun gear hub is splined to the sun gear, its rotation is also halted. With the sun gear now stationary, the ring gear forces the planet gears to rotate on their shafts. As the planet gears walk around the stationary sun gear, the carrier is rotated, but at a speed approximately 30% slower as compared to high range. This also results in a torque increase. 
Let's break here for a short review. Please stop the tape while answering the questions. Here are the answers to question number one. One is the pinion and bevel gear. Two is the gear hub. Three is the planetary carrier. Four is the high range clutch pack. Five is the planet gear. Six is the brake. Seven is the low range clutch pack. And eight is the sun gear hub. The answer to question number two is false. The high range clutch is hydraulically applied and spring released. Number three is true. The steering planetary contains three planet gears and one sun gear. Number four is false. When in high range, the planetary sun gear is free to rotate. We'll now cover the third portion of the steering unit, the intermediate drive planetary. This planetary transmits the drive to the pinion shaft at a reduced speed and higher torque than that of the planetary steering assembly. Three planet gears, a sun gear, and the carrier make up the basic composition of the planetary. Let's take a look at what the intermediate drive planetary does for the steering unit. Drive from the planetary steering assembly is transferred to the intermediate planetary sun gear through the internally splined drive coupling. As the sun gear rotates, it forces the planet gears to rotate on their shafts. Therefore, the planet gears walk around the stationary ring gear, causing the carrier to rotate. The carrier is now rotating at a reduced speed ratio of 2.9 to 1 when compared to the input from the drive coupling. The carrier drives the pinion shaft through a splined connection. From the pinion shaft, the drive is directed to the final drive planetary, which will be covered later in the program. Let us now summarize the mechanical operation of the steering unit. When the transmission is engaged, the pinion gear rotates, driving the bevel gear hub and the high range clutch retainer. When the steering system is in high range, hydraulic oil pressure is delivered through the gear hub to the back side of the high range piston, which actuates the clutch pack. The retainer, clutch pack, and planetary now rotate as a single unit. When placed in low range, hydraulic pressure to the high range clutch is cut off and the low range clutch is hydraulically actuated. The retainer around the low range clutch pack is stationary. So when applied, the clutch pack holds the planetary sun gear stationary through the sun gear hub. The planet gears are now forced to rotate on their shafts by the ring gear. As the planet gears walk around the stationary sun gear, the carrier turns, but at a reduced speed of approximately 30%. The brake is also a clutch pack, but is spring applied. Whenever in high or low range, hydraulic oil pressure holds the brake clutch pack in the released position. When the steering lever is placed in the brake position, the hydraulic pressure to the low or high range clutch pack and the brake is simultaneously cut off and the brake is applied by spring tension. The actuated brake clutch pack holds the planetary carrier from rotating, thus preventing drive to be delivered to the track. 
The drive produced through the planetary steering assembly is delivered to the intermediate planetary by a drive coupling. The intermediate planetary reduces the drive speed at a 2.9 to 1 ratio, thus increasing drive torque to the pinion shaft. Now that we have seen the mechanical operation of the steering unit, let's see what makes it operate. As mentioned earlier, this is a hydraulic steering system. Using this schematic, we'll trace the basic oil flow from the rear frame and transmission to the steering unit. Flow for the system is created by a dual element gear type pump mounted to and driven by the torque converter. The pump element nearest the torque converter draws oil from the transmission housing through a wire mesh screen and delivers it to the steering unit for lubrication. The second pump element transfers oil from the rear frame through a suction strainer and a series of three oil filters to the regulator valve on the transmission. At the regulator valve, the oil is separated into charge pressure for the transmission pilot valve and for the steering unit. In the next frame, we'll trace the flow into the steering unit. The hydraulic control system for the steering unit consists of three major components the clutch brake valve, the high-low range valve, and the junction manifold. Oil enters the high-low valve housing, then flows to the clutch brake valve, back through the high-low valve, where it is directed through the junction manifold and on to the steering unit. Next in the program, we look at where the hydraulic components are located and then discuss their operation in detail. The transmission is mounted to the front face of the rear frame. The transmission and rear frame are sealed from one another by an O-ring, but they share common hydraulic oil. Together, they have a total capacity of approximately 67 gallons. The pump inlet hoses are also shown in this picture. As mentioned earlier, the hose from the transmission supplies the pump element closest to the torque converter, and the hose from the rear frame supplies the second element. Inside of the transmission housing is a serviceable wire mesh screen. It is important to periodically clean this screen, as outlined in the operator's manual. The suction strainer is located in line between the rear frame and the hydraulic pump. The purpose of the strainer is to remove large contaminants from the oil before it enters the pump. The strainer contains a cartridge type element which must be serviced periodically as described in the operator's manual. Shown in the picture is the hydraulic pump as seen from under the machine. The pump is a positive displacement gear type, having two elements. One element supplies the steering unit with lubrication oil at approximately 67 gallons per minute when the engine is operating at rated speed. The second element supplies the transmission circuit and the steering unit with charge pressure at an approximate rate of 53 gallons per minute. The steering system oil is filtered by three oil filters located to the left of the operator's seat behind an access door. The filters incorporate replaceable cartridge type paper elements with a three micron rating. The filters are connected to one another in parallel meaning the oil flow is equally distributed to them 
providing the filtration system with equal distribution of sediment from one filter to another. The two steering control valves are located on top of the rear frame cover. The fuel tank has been removed in this picture for clarity, but the valves can be reached for service with the fuel tank installed. The top valve provides fluid pressure to the steering unit for clutch apply and brake release. The high-low valve, located beneath the clutch brake valve, directs the clutch apply oil from the top valve to either the high range or low range clutch pack. Also incorporated in the clutch brake valve is the foot brake control spool. The operation of the valves in conjunction with the steering unit will be discussed in detail a little later. Let's now take a look under the rear frame cover. Directly below the steering valves is the junction manifold. The basic function of the manifold is to direct the oil from the steering valves to the proper hoses through cord passages within the manifold body. The hoses for one side of the steering unit from left to right are the brake hose, the low range clutch hose, and then the high range clutch hose. The other side of the unit has the same hoses in their respective locations. One lube tube located at the center of the unit provides both sides of the unit with lubricating oil. Let's break for a short review. Please stop the tape while answering the question. 